Hello, fellow generals. Are you ready to be united in command? Well, it's about bloody time you were because a new DLC, Bob Rossa, has just come out for Unity of Command 2. Uh, actually, it came out almost a week ago. And the main reason why I didn't post this video on release is that I got addicted to the bloody thing and just got carried away They're making more footage, quote unquote, for the next videos. <laughs> Do I need to say more? You can read all of those specs from the press release. 24 scenarios, not 23, it's 24. New unit types, new cards, who cares? It's still Unity of Command 2 at its best. This also means that compared to Blitzkrieg, Barbarossa is not a revolution. And nor should it be. Barbarossa picks up two months after where... Blitzkrieg left off. Well, except that every map now is a huge map and every enemy is now nasty and deadly. I don't know if it's just my impression, but it feels that the AI has been beefed up and has become even more human-like than it used to be. I've had Red Army snatching victory from my hands right before the end of the mission in the most devious ways possible, combined with the fact that every step eastwards becomes harder and harder and every victory increasingly hangs on a shoestring. Barbarossa successfully conveys the truly existential nature of the fighting on the Soviet German front. And speaking of difficulty, at the time of making this video, I've gone through about two thirds of the campaign. On classic, as usual, and I've got to say that the difficulty is pretty consistent. Although there are a few particularly frustrating and hard outliers, there are no very easy missions, and the challenge level gradually and actually pleasantly ramps up to match the events and your skill at fighting these kinds of battles, easily making up at least 25 to 30 hours of solid units of command to gameplay which given the ridiculously low price of the dlc is a real bargain so if you've liked the series so far definitely give bob ross a look i see that the design of the scenarios is growing more and more mature compared to their previous releases and for what it's worth there's very little of the bullshitty puzzliness that sometimes crops up in units of command games all right now on to today's menu where we have six dishes all three missions of the first conference and the first three missions of the second as i've already mentioned all of the advice is for the classic difficulty i know they have introduced some quality of life improvements for lower difficulties like giving you lorries and cards if you are struggling but we're not going to talk about that Let's start with Herzgruppe Nord, which appropriately is the first mission I ever played of this DLC. And behind this small map and rather sparsely defended Soviet borders lies a relatively tricky mission. And your first task in succeeding in this mission is to take Shaula and count us as soon as possible. Shaula is a critical supply node for the Soviets. Once you take it, the entire western part of the map will be left without supplies for the Soviets. And Leopold will fall into your hands very easily. I find taking Shaolai on turn 2 to be critical in winning the scenario, so don't shy away from letting your tanks take a few losses if you really need it. Once Shaolai is yours, you only have two turns to reach Daugapil's crossing from there, so move as quickly and as far as you can there. But make sure to use your oversupply ability because these units will stay out of normal supply for a couple of turns at least. You can expect these southeastern objectives not to be properly defended, just keep in mind that as soon as you take Daugapil's crossing, the Soviets will get a lot of reinforcements there and will try to dislodge you from that place if the unit guarding the objective is not strong enough, so make sure it's not a motorized infantry with no specialist steps. Now on to counters. You've got quite a lot of infantry, so break through the initial border guard line, and there's nothing between them and counters proper. But once you reach the city, it can get a little tricky because the defenders are well fortified and have an artillery step. Unloading all of your bombing attacks on turn three and already having a few troops ready to cross the river next to it on turn two would be a good idea. But as with Shaolai, it is a critical objective and if you do sustain more losses than usual, it's fine if you actually take the objective. Why is it important you ask? Well, if you look at the map, it's the only railway connection and once both Shaolai and Kaunas are yours, you will be excellently positioned in terms of supply, whereas the Soviets will lose any kind of supply in most of the map. 
from that point onwards, you only need to march towards Riga, which should not be that difficult of an objective. Just remember, in splitting your forces between Kaunas and Shaolai, whatever troops you commit to Kaunas, they'll pretty much stay there and will not be able to participate in anything serious. So not sending any motorized troops there might be a good idea. I think the Heeresgruppe Mitte mission is probably the most finicky of the three in the first conference of the DLC, and the problem largely stems from the objectives in the north, namely Grodno and Vilnius. Resist the temptation of going immediately south and trying to cut the railway between Bialystok and Grodno. I found that this diverts too many troops in this area and makes Vilnius a much more difficult objective to take on turn 3. So my approach here is a little bit trickier. On turn 1, the units of Panzergruppe 3 must break through and advance towards Elitis and preferably take the town itself, kicking the tanks that sit there out. The next task is taking the bank of the river east of Grodno, building bridges across it and preparing to to assault the crosses on turn two. That's pretty much how you take Grodno from behind. This will also cut one of the railways the Soviets are supplied from in Bialystok. And certainly once the Litus is yours, you are in an excellent position to advance towards Vilnius and taking it. Now on to the south. The Bzesch or Brest Fortress is making another appearance in this game. And you've specifically been given flying artillery to destroy it. And let me tell you, I've tried to spend only one of them and have never succeeded. You really need both. And you don't need either of them for anything else, really. So kick the Soviets out of the fortress and establish a bridgehead with your infantry. Then rush your tanks into the breach. Your initial objective here is to cut off the railway line between Slonim and Bialystok on turn Two. It's a pretty easy task and the railway itself is not protected, but there are a few Soviet mechanized units in the area between Bzesch and Baranovici that might drop a spanner in your works with their zones of control. Past cutting the second and last supply line to Bialystok, the main and only objective for Panzergruppe 2 is rushing towards Minsk. Send all of your motorized and mechanized units along that railway because you will need as much firepower at Minsk as you can master because it's pretty well protected. Once you take Minsk, the objectives past it should not cause you any trouble. And finally to Bialystok, the Red Army has lots of troops in that area, but as you have seen by turn 2, their supply lines will be cut and by turn 4 they will be running out of supplies and unable to attack. Nevertheless, don't be passive with your Herasgruppe Mitte infantry. Cross the river and start destroying the Soviet troops. The Soviets will counterattack there while they can and you will sustain losses, maybe even lose entire divisions, but you really need to be as close to Bialystok as possible when they start running out of supplies. Oh, and using that precision bombing you've got on the supply hub in Bialystok will help you with that. If you look at the map of the Herasgruppe Zud mission, see Dubno in it and expect the Soviets to have crapplers of tanks, even more than they usually do, you would be correct. And if you don't know what Battle of Dubno is, look it up on Wikipedia. In any case, I have found taking Dubno and Rovni on time to be the biggest challenge of this map. And this is what pretty much all of your motorized troops should be geared towards. Capture one of the river crossings, the best one is protected by the NKVZ units, and then push all of your tanks through the breach. Don't engage them in any fighting, they need to get as far to the east as possible. One exception is the crossing at Helm. Send the tank division there to take the supply hub at Kovel, and then move it as close as possible to Wutsk. This way you'll cut the supply for most of the troops between Brody and Koval. In the areas around Przemysl and Lwolf, use your infantry aggressively even if you sustain losses. The railway that goes through Lwolf is critical for later success in the mission, so take the town and the river crossing east of it 
as soon as possible and not when mission tells you to. The big Soviet counterattack will take place on turn two, and the area around Rovne will probably be flooded with strong Red Army units, which is why it's a good idea to have at least one of your own tank divisions to already touch Rovne by the end of turn two and have more of your mechanized motorized troops in the area so that they can provide additional firepower and let you take the town. Once Rovne is yours, your immediate objectives will be to mop up all of those Soviet forces and securing the railway between Rovne and Lvov. At the same time, you should rush a few of your units towards Shepetovka and Zhitomir and use whatever supply tricks you've got at your disposal at this point to allow them to fight on without having a steady supply. The defenders past Shepetovka are not going to be too serious, so you'll be able to take over Zhitomir on turn 6 or 7 and the road to Kiev about a turn after that. And finally, Proskurov gives you enough time to bring the bulk of your infantry to the town and actually take it. Even though if you have forces to spare, you can also attack the town from Shepetovka for an earlier capture. Pskov. Let me tell you, Pskov is by far the most frustrating of the six mission we are looking at today, and it may just as well be the reason you're watching this video at all. So let's get to how you deal with it. One, obviously, it's a difficult mission, so don't have any qualms about buying specialist steps, reinforcing your troops if it means they won't lose their veteran or elite status, and generally using every option you've got during the battle preparation round. One thing you can do is concentrate all of your supply trucks in a single supply hub next to the bridge between Daugapils and Riga. The eastern part of the map is more difficult and you should do everything to stay in supply for as long as possible. But your first step there is not to engage the enemy forces near Daugapils and instead push along the road towards Rezekne, cutting off the railways supplying that section of the map. Don't worry about the Soviets taking back Daugapils. The only thing you should worry about is preventing them from crossing the river and you've got infantry to plug the crossings. The Riga area is much less critical and here your initial objective is to consolidate your forces and destroy those pockets of Soviet defenders. The last critical thing you should do on turn one is to send one tank division towards Valga. The Soviets don't have many defenders in that area and your objective there is to advance as quickly as possible and take Perno by turn four. Don't forget about the Estonian partisans that will help you with that. Also, once you reach the outskirts of Valga, you'll be able to use the precision bombing ability to destroy the bridge behind Tartu, completely cutting off Soviet supply in most of the map and securing securing Tartu for yourself. And once the supply problems kick in, advancing from Riga towards Tersis with your infantry is not going to be too big of a problem. In the east, try to keep all of the Soviet forces south of Rezekne out of supply and try to destroy them as quickly as reasonably possible. You really need that railway to provide you with a more secure supply, although certainly rushing your tanks towards Ostrov and Pskov is a necessity here. Do not let your mobile troops get bogged down in frontline fighting. I've also found it's a good idea to dedicate one strong tank division to taking a Pochka. The motorized divisions you have tend to fail there alone. The Soviet AI also loves counterattacking along the left bank of that river to cut off your railway supply do not let them do that and protect that river crossing at Ostrov. If you take Ostrov in time and it's possible on turn three, Pskov should not be too much of a problem. And thankfully, mercifully, the Kingisep objective is not defended. Just send a mobile troop there and celebrate. Alright, and now let's deal with the least frustrating mission we have for today. While the map is huge and your forces seem to be all over the place, you are given plenty of forces and time to crush the enemy and take all of your objectives. So let's just go over a few of the sticking points the mission presents. First, don't get too complacent about that Soviet pocket in the west. The railway next to it is your only lifeline on this map, and the Red Army has a 
a few strong and still in supply divisions in there and can't wait to break your supply line. So protect the railway and don't wait for the pocket to run out of supplies. Kill them as quickly as possible even if it involves some losses for your infantry and then quickly move the forces you free up to the east. And in the east we come to the second point and it's the most difficult part of this entire map. The Soviets have a lot of troops around Vitebsk, and you have to take the city by turn of four, which is not a lot of time. Thankfully, the Red Army doesn't control the entire northern bank of the river near Polotsk, so you can easily set up bridges there and send two or better three tank divisions in there. The defenders in that area are not very tough, but they are very numerous, and you need enough firepower to grind through them by turn four and take Vitebsk. Another problem point in this scenario is just south of Vitibs, which is where the Soviets have amassed a lot of tanks. Some of those units are strong enough to destroy your own, and actually during my first playthrough of this mission, I lost two tank divisions in one turn there, so be careful. And don't rush it there. Keep some troops in there, but even if the Soviets attack, let them take some ground even. Plus, attacking Vitebs from the north will force the AI to divert some of its tanks to that city. Once you take Vitebsk and destroy the motorized group south of it, send two or three of your tank divisions even further east, bypassing Smolensk to take Yartsevo and Yelnya. Make sure they're oversupplied, there will be problem with supply in that area, plus I highly recommend you to send more than one division there. There will be a few stray Soviet units there and you need to destroy them as quickly as possible to get the objectives in time plus this pincer maneuver will eventually turn into the encirclement of Smolensk and having as many troops east and south of it at that points would be a good idea. As for the rest of the objectives, once Smolensk is encircled, it'll fall very quickly. You can actually take Zlobin undefended in the first two or three turns of the mission and then just keep a division there holding it. The Soviets are rather passive there. And by turn 11, you will have certainly encircled Mogilov through Orsha and have plenty of well-equipped and experienced infantry west of the town. Like Smolensk, Operation München is one of the easier early missions in this DLC, and it's very realistic to expect to wipe out the entire Soviet force here within the allotted time. But in addition to a couple of tricks, it's got one big problem spot in the east, and it's called Tiraspol. As you can see, the Soviets have a strong and well-fortified unit there, and because of the limitations of the map, you can't easily surround the town. My best result at cutting off its supply has been turn 7, and I don't think you can realistically expect much more than that. You will really have to force yourself into the town, and everything else that you do during the mission should be geared towards having as many forces by turn 8 at Tiraspol as you can. The rest of the scenario is not too difficult. Don't rush Felcher crossing on turn 1. The Soviets will be tempted to counterattack it and might insert a unit there that you will not be able to dislodge by the end of turn 2. Instead, during the placement round before the mission, build a bridge a couple of hexes north of the crossing. The cavalry division you've got in that area will handily cut off that railway the Soviets are fed from in the southwest and prevent any reinforcements and the Soviets have got a lot of tanks near Kishinev from moving towards the south. In the far north, the German divisions you have at Botosani and the experienced Romanian division with the artillery step will be enough to kill that tank in Chernozzi, just bypass the front line of defenders. And the same can be said about the center. While the Romanian tank division does not have the fire power of its German counterparts, it's no less mobile so use it to bypass everything without engaging the enemy and move towards the 2 Mogilov objective, which is not defended by default, and cut the supply of the defenders in Belte. Even though with some luck the town can be taken over on turn 1. From there on, a coordinated thrust towards Kushinev will just destroy everything the Soviets have there. Ah, 
and thank you very much for watching. I'm extremely happy to see the franchise flourishing with this new DLC. I'm mean, really looking forward to seeing and covering more missions and future guides. And speaking of coverage, let me just point you to my second channel, Slotherboom Couch Buttock. And as the name suggests, it's largely for low effort videos. And so far, I've used it to publish full mission footage with commentary added to it. It. And simultaneously with this video, I'm publishing a complete coverage of the Pskov mission on that channel. So if you want a more detailed explanation of how to deal with that mission, and if you want to listen to me yak for 12 minutes, go check it out. I'll include it in the end screen and in the description. Cheers.